exercise 413. Go back to the beginning, learning objective one, learning objective two. Let's read the question here. Missing data, basic cost, volume, profit concepts. And we have some two charts below us, eight cases, and we're missing some data. Fill in the missing amounts in each of the eight case situations below. Each case is independent of the others. Gives us a hint. One way to find the missing amounts is to prepare a contribution format income statement for each case, enter the known data, then compute the missing items. That's a hint. We don't need that. You may think, but how are we going to do it? Follow me. A. Part A and Part B. Part A has four cases. Part A says, assume that only one product is being sold in each of the following four cases. So, let's first of all get something where we can write it out. So it's case one, two, three, four. We're going to figure out units sold for the <clears throat> for some of them. There's a column for sales, a column for variable costs, a column for contribution margin per unit, <clears throat> fixed costs, and operating income or loss. So here we go. I will put our known data in white and fill in the rest in red. So what do we know about this? Well, case one, we know that we're selling 9,000 units. We know we're selling them for our total sales are $270,000. We know our variable expenses are $162,000. We don't know this, but we know our fixed expenses are 90,000 and we don't know our operating income or our loss. So <clears throat> we have to figure out what's going on here. Let me switch to red. Let's start with our contribution margin per unit. The units sold are 9,000. We sell them, we have $270,000 in sales with variable costs of $162,000. So sales minus variable costs will give us a contribution margin, an overall contribution margin. So the difference here is $108,000 divided by the 9,000 units. So if you take sales minus variable cost to get contribution margin and divide that by our units, our contribution margin divided by units should give us contribution margin per unit. You'll find it's 12. Well, look at this. We had $108,000 in contribution margin. Our contribution margin minus our fixed costs of 90. If we had 108, subtract 90. That will give us 18,000. Now you can, you can do a separate contribution format income statement for each one if that helps you, but you should be able to see it. That's the goal that you want to. If you can do these without having to write them out, you've arrived. Case number two. What do we know about case number two? We do not know how many units we sold, but we sold $350,000 worth. We don't know our variable expenses, but we know our contribution margin per unit is 15 bucks. We know our fixed costs are 170,000, and we know that we have an operating income of 40,000. So if we have an operating income of 40,000, if we add that back to our fixed costs, that'll give us our contribution margin, right? Because it's our contribution margin minus the fixed costs that give us our operating loss. So something minus 170 leaves 40 left, must be 210. So if 210 is our contribution margin, sales minus variable costs must equal 210. So 350 minus what equals 210? It doesn't take much to get us to $140,000. So there we go, there's 140. Now, how many units did we sell? Well, our contribution margin our contribution margin per unit is 15 bucks. So we need our contribution margin. Well, we know it's 40 plus the 170. We know it's the 210. So if we take 210,000 and we divide it by 15, you will get 14,000 units. 14,000 units. Now, if you multiply that by 15, you'll get your 210. There you go. Case number three. What do we know about case number three? Well, we know that we sold 20,000 units. We don't know what our sales were, but our variable costs are $280,000. Our 
Our contribution margin per unit is six bucks. We don't know our fixed costs, but we know we made thirty-five thousand dollars. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got a little bit of work to do here, right? So what do we know? We know our contribution margin per unit is six bucks. We know that our variable costs are two eighty. So if our contribution margin per unit is six bucks and we sold 20,000 units, our total contribution margin must be, six times 20, must be 120,000. And if our contribution margin is 120,000, we get to our contribution margin by sales minus variable costs. So something minus 280 equals 120. So all we have to do is add the 120 to the 280, we get 400,000. <clears> 400,000 minus the 280 gives us $120,000 in contribution margin. Well, our contribution margin of 120 minus our fixed costs leave us with $35,000. So 120 minus what equals 35? To get that, just take 120 minus the 35. You'll find that your fixed costs are $85,000. Number four. What do we know? We know that we sold 5,000 units. We know that we sold those 5,000 units for $160,000. We don't know our variable costs or our contribution margin per unit, but our fixed costs are $82,000, and we lost 12. So the question then is, let's work our way backwards here. What minus 82,000 equals negative 12? So if we took 70,000 minus 82,000, we get negative 12. And all we have to do is add them together. Negative 12 plus 82 is 70,000. So our contribution margin must be 70,000. Well, if our contribution margin is 70,000 and we sold 5,000 units, 70,000 divided by 5,000 must equal $14 per unit is our contribution margin. Sorry, I said I would do that in red, so let me... Uh, Replace that and do that in red. $14 is our contribution margin per unit. So from here, we have to figure out what our variable costs are. Well, if our contribution margin, our total contribution margin is 70,000, and our sales are 160, we have to get from 160 minus variable costs to get to 70,000. So it doesn't take much to see that 160 minus 90,000 will give us that 70,000. You should be able to do this without doing the contribution statement, but if you have to, keep in mind that every time you do one of these, all you're doing is, is, is this. You're saying sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin minus fixed costs equal operating income. And you can go backwards. Operating income plus fixed costs equal contribution margin plus variable cost equals sales. So you can work your way down or you can work your way back up. Uh, and you should be able to work your way up and down this, this, this. And we're only talking about five variables, right? Sales, variable cost, contribution margin, fixed cost, and operating income. So there we go. There's the first case that we're done. The second case has different uh, highlights uh, or headings. So let's write this down. Case here we're given a category for sales, category for variable expenses, and another one for the average contribution margin ratio, another one for fixed costs, and finally operating income or loss. And we have to solve four cases. Let's get our white pen out. Number one, what are we told? We're told we have 450,000 in sales, we don't know our variable expenses, but we know our average contribution margin ratio is 40%. We don't know our fixed costs, but we have an operating income of $65,000. So we need to figure out our fixed costs and our variable costs. Well, we have an average contribution margin of 40%. So 40% of 450,000 is 180. So our contribution margin is 180. Once we have that, we can either, we're here right now, our contribution margin, we can either work our way down or work our way up. Let's go down. 
So our contribution margin of 180 minus something equals 65. Minus our fixed cost equals 65, so our fixed cost must be 115. Great, now let's work our way up. If our contribution margin is 180, 450,000 minus something must give us 180. So 450 minus x equals 180. Doesn't take much to see that we have 270 in there. Let's go to case number two. What are we given in case number two? A little bit more information here. We're told that sales are $200,000. Variable expenses are $130,000. We don't know our con average contribution margin ratio. We know our fixed expenses are $60,000, and we don't know our operating income or loss. So, sales minus variable cost equal contribution margin. 200 minus 130 equals 70. That's our contribution margin. 70 minus our fixed cost equals our operating income. 70 minus 60 equals 10. So we've worked our way down. Now, we just have to figure out what this percentage is. 200 minus 130 is 70,000. 70,000 is our contribution margin. So 70,000 divided by 200,000 uh, will give us our contribution margin ratio. So 70 divided by 200 is 35%. And I did say that I would uh, do it in red, and I didn't do this one in red, so let me just get rid of this one so that you can uh, we can be consistent with what we're doing here. 10,000. All right, let's switch back to white. Let's do case number three. What are we given? We're not given sales. We're not given variable costs, but we're given an average contribution margin of 80% and fixed costs of $470,000. And finally, net income of $90,000. And we have to work our way backwards. So we have operating income. We have fixed costs. Remember, operating income plus fixed costs equal contribution margin. So 90 plus 470 is $560,000 is our contribution margin. Well, if our contribution margin is 560 and that represents 80%, all we have to do is take 560,000 divided by 0.8 because something times 0.8 equals 560. So if something sales times 0.8 equals 560, 560 divided by 0.8 must equal sales. So if we take 560 divided by 0.8, we're going to get $700,000. That is our sales. So if our, sa if, if our contribution margin ratio is 80%, we know our sales are 100%, our variable cost, the variable ratio expense, must be 20%. So 20% of 700,000 is 140,000. So you could have done it in this format and then just did the, uh, uh, the percentages on the side. But again, you should be able to do this freehand like this. Finally, our last one. What are we given here? We're given sales of 300,000. We're given variable expense of 90,000. We don't know our contribution margin ratio or our fixed expense, but we're losing $15,000 in the process here. So sales minus variable cost equal contribution margin. 300 minus 90 is 210,000. That's our contribution margin. So 210,000 is what percentage of 300? It's 70%. So there's our contribution margin, 70%. Well, 90, 30, 300 minus 90 is 210. There's our contribution margin. 210 minus something gives us negative 15,000. So that means that the fixed cost must be greater than 210 by 15,000. So if we subtract 225, 210 minus 225 will give us negative 15,000. That is question for 13. You should be able to do it without resorting to doing a separate contribution format income statement in each one. You should be able to. That doesn't mean you can't use the contribution format uh, uh, as, as your method of getting there, but your goal is to do it without it. All right, great.